Last week I shared a message with you. And the title was a question mark. And the sermon was, what is your harvest? What is your harvest? What are you planting seeds in your life to obtain? What are you reaching out and and putting into the soil around you? What are you expecting to see what God is wanting to do in your life? I have them in the back of the church waving at me right now, and I don't even have to look up. That's how vibrant they're going like this. So if the ushers will come, we're going to receive God's tithe. (laughs) And your offerings. And if you're of the electronic age of doing everything, remember, you can go into our website. You can... Pay your tithe and give your offerings through PayPal. You can do it here at church. You can see Billy Joe. Go ahead, wave some more to where you can. She's in the back of the church. You can go to Billy Joe. We have all the devices that's needed. And you can give unto the Lord right here in church through PayPal. Uh, For future reference, we're getting a new website. And in that new website, we're also going to have an app that you can go in and download it into your phone. And you can go onto that app and it's all secure. And you can find out everything there is about what's going on here. And you can also give unto the Lord through that app. Uh, So some great things are taking place for us as we continue to grow, as we widen up our our barns and our, not not for for finances, (laughs) but for souls. We live in a community that really needs what just took place by God here today. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless every heart here that has a heart to give. God, press down, shaken together and running over, Lord, we know that your promises are real in our lives. God, the ministry that we are able to do for the kingdom, Lord, we just rejoice in that. Now, God, bless the hearts that have hearts to give. In Jesus' name. Amen. As they're passing amongst you, I also have a couple other announcements. This year, like last year, we are wanting to bless families at Christmas. As you go out of the door this morning, there will be opportunity for the head usher, Roger. He's, he's that good-looking, well-dressed man in the back. He will have these blue slips. And on these blue slips, what it is, is it's, it's Spirit of Life family members' names and why you would like to nominate them for the need that they would have in their life. This is anonymous. You, you share with us if you feel someone within our church needs to be blessed. Maybe it's someone outside the four walls that needs to be blessed. We're looking for nominations to where we can bless last year. Three, four, five families. Uh, Somebody can give me that number. Uh, But that's how many families we blessed at Christmas time. The other thing that will be taking place soon in the month of November, we're getting here real quick, is that last year we we gathered nearly 900 pounds of food that went into the food bank here in town. The children department is the one that that does that. And, And it took a couple vehicles to get all the food last year. We have opportunities to bless and be a blessing to so many. So let us be found guilty, (laughs) guilty of doing good of what God calls us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. The other announcements that are in your bulletin, there's a trunk or treat that's going to happen uh, here in a few weeks. A Saturday night is going to be our harvest festival, and, and it's just a great time to gather together. But let's get to the message. Can I have 18 minutes of your time? If God will allow me to close this at 11.15, are you good? You will still beat most of the churches to backyard or your favorite restaurant. (laughs) Harvest for the kingdom of God. The necessities of the harvest. What are you expecting from the harvest, from the seed, from the things that you do into the world around you? Look at Mark chapter 4. 
is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches branches, so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. The first necessity to the harvest is the seed that you sow. I want to remind you this morning that it's not the size of the seed that you sow, but the fact that you are sowing seed. Now, when a mustard tree grows and it becomes fully mature, it has the capacity, the, the ability to grow to be large enough to cover this entire sanctuary. It'll be 30 feet wide, 30 or 40 feet tall. It has the ability. And whatever seed you are planting in someone's life, if it's a tender word one day, if it's a kind look, a a gentle smile, if it's someone that you have dealt with for, for years, I encourage you to keep planting the seed for the necessity of the harvest is that we must plant. We must sow the seed of hope into someone's life. We must sow the seed of love into someone's life. We must sow the seed of forgiveness into people's lives. See, we serve a great God, a God that is just not a God of a second chance. As I stand here this day, we serve a God of two and three hundred and four hundred chances. When we come back to God, because we have been astray somehow, we've been refocusing our life, trying to figure out what we want. And God just simply stands there and says, turn, just turn back to me. Turn back to me. Find me where you left me. But our seed that we sow, here it is, the smallest seed that when God does what he does, it grows into almost an unimaginable How little that seed is. And some of you are sitting here and you're saying, Pastor, I've sowed many seeds. I still haven't seen what God wants to do. Church, the necessity of the harvest is that we must sow. And the seeds that you have in your life. See, some of us are still reaping the seeds of discourse. And the seeds of disappointment. Some of us have reaped the seeds that we planted early on in our lives because of the life that we had and the lifestyle. But today I encourage you to sow the seeds into someone else's life that the harvest may be what you desire. That if you want good things, you must sow seeds of good value. If you want to see someone blessed, you sow seeds of blessings into their life. If you want to see someone saved, you sow the seed of salvation. How do you sow your seed? It's through your actions. It's through your words. It's how you relate to those individuals around you. Walk into a room. Not a room. A room. Where did that come from? That was just for your grins and giggles, I guess. When you walk into a room... Be the hope that walks in. Be the words of encouragement that walks in. You may be going through a horrible day. You might be going through your worst day. And in a crowd of people, how many of you know there's going to be someone in there having a worst day? But God has given us as believers and followers of Christ... He has given us the hope of this world. Scripture says the world will be filled with trouble. But rejoice because I have overcome the world. Sow the seed that God has placed you with. And if it's seed that needs to be cleaned up a little bit, (laughs) run it through one more time through the word of God, through prayer before it ever, ever is dispersed into someone else's life. The second necessity is you have to understand your season. The season with which you are in. See, all around the world there is harvesting fruits and vegetables on a continuous basis. That's the reason why in the middle of winter you can walk into Festival or Aldi's or one of the other stores that you may frequent. And you will find fresh, even though they may be house 
grown in a major factory setting, but you can find fresh tomatoes. Praise God for fresh jalapenos. Out in the foyer all ago, I said, you know, it, tomato, tomato. <laughs> as long as it's in salsa, it's good. <laughs> but in the season that you're in, look at scripture. John chapter 4. Verse 35, it says, Do not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. This necessity for harvest is that we realize what season that we are in. If the crop is not harvested during the harvest time, for that entire crop could be ruined because we refuse to harvest it. When it is ready, it needs to be harvested. There's individuals that, that have walked in, even into this building today. I am aware of the fact that people walked in hoping someone would pray for them. Hoping someone would reach out and acknowledge them. Hoping someone in the season of need in their life would just speak to them. And then we have the ability for God, the all-knowing God that we serve, prepared a time that we get to come before Him and we get to lay at His feet in the altar. Some of you, as I watched, prayed for one another. You didn't come to the altar. You prayed right there. In the season that we're in, we have to be ready to harvest when it is ripe. When we can give hope and harvest the blessings of God. There is a season. The third necessity that I want to share with you is that God needs servants. Every individual sitting in this building, the individual taking up the space between your two elbows are a servant of God. You are that one that God needs for you to reach into someone else's life, to plant the seed, to be ready to reap the harvest, to be found faithful in what he's calling you to do. Matthew 21, verses 28 through 30 says, But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he regretted it, and he went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Look back at the beginning of verse 28. It's a question. But what do you think? How do you think about yourself? How do you perceive who you are in the kingdom of God? Jesus Christ, before he ascended into heaven, he made this statement. He called every one of us to be a witness. He says, I want you to go and be a witness unto me. I want you to go and be a witness right here where you are at. And as you witness and you find God moving in your life, you continue to witness as you go forth. When we see the power and the anointing of God in our lives... We may say no at the beginning, but then God does something within our spirit to draw us into the servanthood. And for some of you, you've been called to to not a higher place, but a higher calling of standing behind a pulpit, holding a microphone that don't snap, crackle, and pop. Praise Jesus. Lord forbid, I turned it on and it started carrying on. I don't know what happened. It must be this muffin top I got going on right here. Oh, for those that didn't see it over here, it's the muffin top right here. (laughs) All I can think of is Dunlap disease. My belly Dunlapped over my belt. (laughs) Those listening on a podcast, you should have been here. But God's called you and you refused But then you felt the the pull and the draw, the power of God to be found faithful in serving Him. And I believe the most detrimental thing we can do in our lives is say, yes, I will be found faithful and then refuse the assignment. 
Because each and every one of you, each and every one of you have a gift, a seed that you can plant. But each and every one of you, you must be aware that God needs you to perform as a servant to Him. Because at any given time, as I look around, we have jail ministry. Talk about people that are ripe and ready to be held into the harvest. But there's other individuals that you've been ministering to, even though you did not realize it. Do you understand that you are being ministered to on an ongoing basis? Angels have been put in charge over you. And people that, that have that have spoken into your life, you can think about it and you can remember those individuals. I have old friends that I remind them often when we get to talk after six, seven months without talking about the important things in my life that they've spoken into me. But we're called to be a servant. The necessity of the harvest is that we become servants. Taking our talents and our God-given abilities that He gave us for His purpose and applying it to the work. And it's work. As my wife stood up here talked about being alone. We're faithful to God and we're thankful for you as friends. I love getting together and I love getting, getting to be able to laugh and just to enjoy what is happening in our lives. But then all of a sudden... The enemy comes in and tears down and tries to remove us from what God wants. But God's faithful. The entire body of Christ must get involved. In Mark chapter 4, verse 8, it says, But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some 30-fold, some 60, some 100. The fourth necessity to the harvest is the soil. We're living in a time in our life that the soil, even though it has not been prepared to the receiving of seed, it is there. I made mention last night that, that how many of you here in this house have, have ever went out and picked rocks? Put your hands up. Picking rocks is a... It's a pastime here in Wisconsin. You have to pick rocks to get ready to prepare for planting of seed and planting for fields. And, and, and if it rains after you picked rocks, you have to go back out and pick out more rocks because they're uncovered once again. We have to prepare the soil that is around us. I came from Illinois where the soil is black and things grow wonderful. We didn't pick rocks. We didn't have to worry about those things, but we did have to worry about invasive weeds and invasive seedlings that would come in and take over. When you look at what God wants to do, when we start sowing seed on, on preparated ground or ground that has been prepared, we find that, that that will grow into a greater plant. There's people, people in my life that I was able to sow seeds of, of good things into them, spoken to them. You yourself have individuals that you can call out by name, that their soil was prepared, that was ready to receive seed of hope and seed of destiny. And, and, and you saw that when the seed started to mature and it started to grow and it started to bring forth the fruit, you saw that, that what you placed within them started to return 30 60 or a hundredfold. I've got young men that I brought through ministry that are pastoring churches going farther than I ever imagined I would. Young men that, that are already in the administration side help guiding and directing not just a few churches but hundreds of churches. Why? Because it was soil that God had prepared and, and through those around prepared and they received the seed and they applied it to their lives. And it started to grow. Now think about that individual that you have spoken into, that you've lived an honest life of integrity before, and how they are growing, maturing in the Lord. See, the enemy comes in and says, you're, you're not accomplishing anything. You're, 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 you're not worthy. You're, you're, some days you feel like you're useless and you don't account for anything. But remember... 
the small, the small seed of hope when it takes root can become the greatest of all things just like that small mustard seed come the piano Jen I'm going to be I'm going to be a man of integrity and close at 1115 I got I got three more three more things This is what my heart's desire is for you today. Is that you purpose. You purpose within yourself. That you go back through and evaluate who you are. And you take every negative thought... And you cast it. You throw it away. Because you aren't no second class individual. You ain't some throwaway trash. If you've messed up today, this is what you get to do. You get to sit as I get to stand. And we rejoice that God reached down and pulled us up out of the pit that we dug and then we fell in. So you walk through your lives and, and there's times that you don't think you matter. But, but can I tell you, that's just the enemy sitting upon your shoulder trying to whisper into the doubt. See, the world wants to reinforce that in our lives. We've messed up. Oh, it's been a month ago that one of the Young man says, I'm still receiving mail at the prison. I'm not even there anymore. Think about that. You have the ability to change who you are on a continuous basis. Let us be found faithful in reminding of who we are because of to whom we belong. See, that's the, that's the purpose of what I'm trying to get you to understand right now. It's to whom we belong that matters. See, what you have done does not determine what you're going to be. What has been your past does not have to be your future. You can speak hope into someone else's life. There's men and women sitting across this, this sanctuary right now that are a testimony. And there's some of you saying, well, oh, I wish I could be like this. But you really don't know what hell they already walked through. But this day, the necessity of the harvest is to remember our value. The last point of this message is there is a sure hope. You plant the seed. God will do His part. There's a sure hope in that we be found faithful that God will do His part. It's the nature of who He is. The God that we serve is not a God that lies, but fulfills His promises. His promises are yes and amen. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. Can I tell you, God knows all that you've done and He still loves you? He still desires you to come into His family, to take residence in His presence, and He's even prepared a place for you that when you die and you pass from this world into eternity, that you can reside in His sanctuary. The hope of the harvest is found within what God's already put within us. The hope, the sure hope, is that God has always been faithful. He has never, never failed. He's never been found slacking or lacking. He's always been found faithful. And I can rejoice in that this morning. Amen? Can you rejoice in that this morning? Now, this is a challenge. How many likes homework? Okay, for those two that enjoy homework, 
And if you don't enjoy homework, find an accountability partner. (laughs) I ask, and this is a serious, will you go home? Don't put it off until next week. But would you go home and evaluate who you are in Christ? Dig in and find some scriptures of what Christ says, what the Word of God says about who you are. That we are the children of a living God. You put forth the effort, and this is what I will guarantee, not because of who I am, but because of the Word of God. If you will go home and evaluate yet today who you are in the Word of God through who Christ is, you will find the value. Of what God says. And then my prayer is that you will start using that to rebuke the enemy when the enemy tries to convince you that you are nothing, that what you have has no bearing on anyone else. Because for every incident that we've went through, we give someone hope on how to navigate to the foot of the cross.